Hey everyone, so continuing with our regression models, we're gonna do something a little different today, and we're gonna to try to see if we can predict PE ratios using something called cross-sectional regression. And usually in the real world, what we do is we look at a group of companies in a specific industry or sector. We hypothesize about what drives those PE ratios. Remember, that's very important because we wanna avoid data mining. So we, we, we hypothesize what really drives PE ratios. Maybe, for example, it could be beta, the volatility of the specific security, or it could be the payout ratio. And what we do is regress the PE ratios on each of the company's payout ratio and beta. And therefore, we have a predicted PE ratio. We build a model where we have our parameters, and we can make predictions on PE ratios given any type of information about its beta or its payout ratio. Once we have a predicted PE ratio, we can compare that to the market's PE ratio and determine if the market PE ratio is under or overvalued for that security. So we're gonna use Quando, and Quando is only gonna give us a, a small data set here. It's a small sample set of about 30 companies. In the real world, we would actually wanna look at specific companies and groups. I just wanna show how we could actually apply this in the real world. And in, the, in our next video series, we'll, we'll actually use real data or a, lar a larger sample of data in specific industries. So let's just see if we can build this model out. So as always, we're importing Quando. We have our API key. What we're gonna use is a fundamental data set that Quando provides. And so we can, we'll just call this fundamentals. And that's gonna be a data frame. And we'll take quando.get table as a function we'll use. And the data set is called sharedar slash sf1. And the dimension we need to specify is equal to MRY, MRY what's the most recent year. And we need to paginate equals true, get all the data. But of course, we're only getting a sample set of this data. So let's run that, see if that works. Fundamentals, see what that looks like. There you go, so you have tickers. We have these different column data, data points here. And if you want to take a look further at what these data points are, we can just say for underscore in fundamentals dot columns. We'll just print out our columns. So here you go. You can see all this different, all these data sets, debts, EBITDA margins, equity, gross margins, et cetera, market cap, all that great stuff. That P, what we are interested in is the PE ratio. And we're going to look at the PE ratio as if it has a relationship. We believe it has a relationship with the payout ratio, return on assets, and return on equity. And of course, you can use a, a number of different variables that you believe have a relationship with PE ratio. These are the ones I've, I've chosen. Now, let's just take a look at, we're going to create a new data frame, and we're just going to say fundamentals. And we're going to look at the ticker, the Calendar date, PE ratio. Um, we'll look at the payout ratio, return on assets, and return on equity. Again, I want to look at a specific calendar date because, for example, let's. I'll just throw this out here so you can see what I'm talking about. We have multiple date calendar dates here. I just want to, I'm doing a cross sectional and not a time series regression. So I just want to look at 2008, 12, 31. That's the, the time period I'm going to choose for each of these securities. So for ExxonMobil, 12, 30, I'm going to get these variables for 12, 31. For Walmart, I get these variables for 12, 31, et cetera, and so on. So to do that, we need to take our fundamentals data frame, specify the ca calendar date column, calendar date, and we want that to be equal to 2018, 12, 31. Let's see if that works. There we go. So now we have all these different tickers. And again, I want to emphasize we're using sample data from Quando that only gives us access to these tickers. In the real world, we would really want to look at is specific tickers in a specific industry or sector because PE ratios and different different industries will be have a different relationship to returns on assets and return on equity and payout ratios versus other industries. So let's continue, given that caveat there. Now we want to import our regression model. So we're gonna say import stats models. 
stats.api. This is the library we're going to be using as SN for stats models. And I want to specify our dependent variable, y. That's just going to be equal to our data frame. And we're going to look at, remember, that's just going to be the PE ratio. So run that. And so we can see what that looks like here. So look at the shape of this. Make sure it's the correct shape. There we go. Now let's look at our independent variables. That's going to be equal to our data frame. And we're going to look at, remember, the payout ratio, the return on assets, and the return on equity. Let's run that. Let's look at the shape of this. There we go. If you want to just take a look at that, see these are our independent variables. Now we need to add a constant to this. So we're going to say x equals stats models sm dot add constant. There we go. You can see what I did here. I just added a constant here for our model. Now we need to build our model. So we're going to say model equals stats model sm dot ols. We're going to use ordinarily squares. Y as our independent variables and X our dependent variables. And finally, we can fit our model, which is equal to model.fit. We created a new variable called results. Let's run that. And we can now summarize our data set. So results.summary, we get our output. And there we go. See our R squared here, adjusted R squared, F test, F statistic, and of course our coefficients and our T statistics. You can notice if they're significant or not, and our P values. So given that, and you know, in our other videos, in our past videos, we go over each of these statistics. But assuming these are correctly specified, our model is correctly specified, there isn't any multicollinearity, et cetera, we can take our parameters. So let's look at results.params. And we can build our rate, our model. And so let's say given a specific security in the real world, maybe we have we have our model now, and we're looking at a specific security, and it gives us a payout rate, we know it's payout ratio, we know it's return on assets, we know it's return on equity. Let's say it's let's say it's payout ratio. We just look in the market and we say it's payout ratio 0.35, its return on assets is 0.12, its return on equity is 0.25 or something. So we have all we have those variables. And now using our model and these parameters, we can have a predicted value of what the PE ratio should be. So we can say results.params. And we're going to, that's just our constant, remember? That's our constant here. I'm going to add that to results.params1. And then we're going to multiply that by our payout ratio because that's the coefficient on the payout ratio, remember? We're getting this coefficient, we're going to multiply that page, payout ratio. Add that to results that our second coefficient here, two multiplied by return on assets. See here, return on assets, that coefficient multiplied by return on assets. And lastly, even though this one doesn't look statistically significant, results dot params. And how do I know that? Because I'm looking at here, this p value here. It's very, this t statistic is very small. But we'll just add it in results dot params. So in our model multiplied by returns on equity. And we should be able to run that. And there's our predicted value of the PE ratio for this hypothesized security. And so we look in the market, we look at the current PE ratio, let's say it's 30, and we would determine that its true PE ratio should be 18, the, it is overvalued, and vice versa. If the market's PE ratio was 10, and we, our predicted PE ratio should be 18, we would, we would hypothesize that it's an undervalued security and we should buy up the security. So that's our video today on predicted PE ratios. In the next video, I'm actually gonna look at real data or, or a larger data set of of companies in specific industries, and we'll apply the same idea of using cross-sectional regression to predict PE ratios. 
And also, I just want to point out, and this is how we could actually build a model to make predictions of PE ratios in the real world, the buy or sell securities, depending on if we believe it's under or valued based on this regression model that we built. So if you like this video, please, please subscribe. Till next time, thank you.